So with all this talk of AMD, I decided I wanted to look at some more AMDs. Yeah, we like coffee around here. Huge thanks to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. With Trade Coffee, you can discover new coffees from the nation's top roasters and have them delivered directly to your door. Brands like Augie's, which is actually a local coffee shop where I used to spend pretty much every single lunch hour back when I worked in IT. But if you aren't sure what coffee is right for you, take the short coffee quiz and Trade will curate the best matches for you and have them delivered straight to your home as often as you like. And in fact, the first 100 viewers that click my link in the description below will get 30% off their first bag and get free shipping. So what are you waiting for? Find your new flavor at Trade Coffee. Okay, so we're not doing any AMD versus uh, Intel in this one. We're doing AMD versus AMD, where I want to take the last processors that were launched on the AMD Zen Plus architecture, which is technically the 2000 series CPUs, but they were labeled as 3000 series CPUs, but they weren't 3000 series CPUs, really, they were 2.5 series CPUs, versus the cheapest Zen 2 architecture. I'm basically talking about the 3400G, which is a four core, eight thread part, versus the AMD 3100, which is a four core, eight thread part, versus the 3300X, which is a four core, eight thread part. So we're not doing Intel in there or any of that sort of stuff. But speaking of Intel, um, I do need to make a correction in our previous video. Um, I incorrectly stated that AMD does not perform the AVX instructions, and that was false. And I also called the iGPU Navi out of habit. It is Vega, but we know they're Vega 11 graphics. It even says it right on the box. We know that, but what we know doesn't mean that we say it good. But regarding the confusing way I just explained the CPUs, Ryzen 3000 series is Zen 2. First gen Ryzen is the 1000 series CPUs, and then the 2000 ser series CPUs, like the 2700X and all that, and the 3200 and 3400G are Zen Plus, which is an improvement upon the Zen 1 architecture, but the 3000 series, like the 3800X, all the way down to the Ryzen 5 3000 series are Zen 2. So for example, the 3400G that we're comparing to the 3100, and then including the 3300X that we did in our previous video, putting those numbers up there, is 12 nanometer process. However, the new 3000 series is seven nanometer process. So we're looking at some IPC improvements. Clearly there were some clock differences between the older CPUs versus the new ones. And considering the fact that the 3400G launched in Q2 of 2019, yeah, a year ago, do you believe it's already been a year? Versus the Q2 offerings now of the 3100 and 3300X, I wanted to see just how far AMD has come in the last year. So I was really curious as to what the differences are in terms of improvement. The other reason why I'm doing this video is I also said in the previous one that a lot of people were just like, and I incorrectly said Navi, were like, well, the 3300X is just a 3400G with the Vega stripped. And the 3100 is just a 3200G because of the iGPU being taken out. And I think it was their naming is what caused them this confusion from AMD simply because of the fact that they're both 3000 series parts. So you can't have a new 3200 and then 3200G. Although I guess they could have, but the problem is, yeah, the way that the, the performance stacks up is confusing. They're almost, it's almost happening now in the CPU space as to like what Nvidia does to its own product stack with GPUs. So some of the specs here, just to kind of go over so you can see what some of the changes are. <clears throat> the 3100, which is Zen uh, 2, it's got a base frequency of 3.6, a one core turbo frequency of 3.9, and an all core turbo frequency of 3.9. So we're actually seeing the single core and the all core frequencies are the same. Now remember, this is four core, eight thread. Now both the 3100 and 3300X have 16 megabytes of uh, L3 cache, only four megabytes on the 3400G. So that's our, you already know there's gonna be a performance difference there. Um, no iGPU on, on the, the latest parts, like I said, um, but you also get a memory improvement in terms of capacity. So the 3100 and 3300X have a max capacity of 128 gigabytes, which is funny, because the only people that would run that much uh, memory are doing like, very heavy workstation type tasks and or building small servers, I don't think you would use these parts for that. But that's probably because they, they use the same memory controllers and such as the Big Brothers. So it's just, a, it's a feature that kind of flowed its way down the product stack, which is nice where you're not chopping up these features for the lower end parts. You, I mean, it's, why not? Like architecture's there. But 64 gigabytes was the max you could put in the 3400G. And they're both 65 watt parts. 
12 nanometer process on the 3400 and 7 nanometer on both 3100 and 3300X. So, with all that said, we're going to run the exact same test that we did in our launch video. Um, we're doing three different gaming titles and then several different um, desktop like works, workflow titles, I guess. We're doing Geekbench, Blender, uh, Cinebench, both single core and all core, and then also 3D Mark. The cool thing about 3D Mark is just the fact that because we're not comparing it to an Intel, which we already know that 3D Mark really sort of favors Intel and all the CPU tests versus AMD, you can just see how these compare across the board because it's only AMD. So, how do these three stack up? Rip 3400G owners and 3200G owners. <sighs> yeah, well, the reason why we didn't use the 3200G in this test because it's a hundred a one hundred dollar CPU versus the 3100, which is also a one hundred dollar CPU. Is the 3100 gives you eight threads and you don't get that with the 3200. So it goes without saying or testing the 3100 would just absolutely destroy the 2200G because or the 3200G because it destroyed the 3400G. So what these charts are really representing here is the IPC improvements between the process improvement for seven nanometer, the quadrupling of the CPU cache, as well as the higher core clocks on average that you're getting with the, the, the true 3000 series Zen 2 processors at the price point. Um, the 3400G, we noticed some weird behavior, but it's not that weird, it's just, the new CPUs are so good at just being able to stay within their power limits and their power targets and their, their frequency targets and just locking there on their own when they promise the all core clock. The 3400G will hit it for a little bit, come down, come back, come down, come back. When I say come down, I'm talking about maybe 50 to 100 megahertz. It's kind of sad just how far ahead the 3100 part is when it's $50 cheaper. It's beating a CPU that is 50% more expensive. That is pretty crazy if you don't need the iGPU, and I know I've said this before, yeah, the iGPU parts really come in handy. I said on Intel, if you, you should always get the K part versus the KF part and not worry about saving the 15 to 20 bucks it is on the iGPU because it comes in handy for troubleshooting. That's on the high end stuff. Like, you know, we're talking four or $500 CPUs. It makes no sense to trade off that level of performance that you're seeing in these charts for a 3400G with an iGPU with a, with a, you're probably not gonna use it anyway because you're gonna wanna run a discrete graphics card and the second you plug one in, just know you are getting a significant reduction in CPU performance for a CPU that costs 50% more than the current 3100. Now the other thing I wanted to see, can we overclock a 3100 to match a 3300X? The 3300X is all core turbo clocking to 4.3 gigahertz. That is something I can't manually overclock on the 3400G. The 3400G, we can't even get to get a, a stable 4.2 at all times. And so that's why you didn't see any overclocking on the 3400G or the 3100 in these charts. Well, with the exception of me being curious, because then the argument is, well, we just overclock the 3400. I don't think overclock this would even reach the 3100, if you want to know the truth. But the 3100 is $20 less than the 3300X. So I was curious, could you save 20 bucks and overclock it to match? We got close, you can see it on the charts. It's a perfect middle, middle gap between where it is fac factory, factory out the box and you're gonna go, and the digitals, all of my vice grip garage fans out there, you can see that it's literally at the halfway mark between the 3300X out of the box settings, which by the way, we couldn't manually overclock because it's already going 4.3 out of the box. There's like a wall there, you try and go higher, it just crashes. So it's already on its own going as fast as it can. I don't think it's worth the saving of the 20 bucks if you wanna know the truth. The 3100, although a great bargain at 99 bucks, I think they could have charged $150 for the 3300X and it would have made sense. But at $20 savings, I think it's worth it to just go to the, the 3300X. So the 3100, although amazing budget part, I, 
I feel like they priced these too close together. And so my recommendation there would be just borrow 20 bucks from someone. Go do, I don't know, Instacart or something for a couple of days and make a couple bucks. I don't know. However you wanna make 20 extra bucks, do it. If you're already shopping these two parts, I don't feel the 3100 makes sense with how much faster the 3300X is for $20. Yeah, AMD really could have priced it more expensive. But there you go, I wanted to kind of, I was just curious, what, what was the single generational improvement looking like? And these, these will hold true too if you're running, let's say a 2600, and then you get a, an equal 3000 series CPU with the same number of cores and the same number of threads. These are the same type of improvements you'll see because what you're seeing here is an architectural difference, not a core, just the core speeds, which should make you excited for the 4000 series that they've already launched on notebooks, which people have already done reviews on showing how insane it's gonna be. But Jay, should I just wait for the 4000 series? I don't know. I don't know when they're coming out. You might buy a, uh, you might buy a 3800X today and tomorrow there's a 4800X. I don't know. I don't think it's gonna happen that soon. But AMD every single year has come out with something like uh, a clockwork. Like megahertz clockwork. Like over clockwork. Like over clockwork. <laughs> anyway. Guys, thanks for watching this video. I just, these are, this is fun and exciting. I've said it in our last one. It's exciting to play with the high-end stuff, but seeing the entry-level stuff be last gen's high-end stuff, or two gens ago or whatever, in the 7700. Like, a lot of people were like, did AMD pay you to do the 7700? I said why we did the 7700. AMD, during the press conference, or the press meeting that we had, uh, made a claim in there that we really wanted to test, and that is, that the 3300X has caught up and passed the 7700K, which mind you is only three years old. All right guys, sound off in the comments below, 3100 or 3300X. And I might, if you're running like a 3200G and you've got a GPU, it might even be worthwhile to update to a 3100. You can probably get 50 bucks for your 3200 and then pay 50 bucks for a 3100 and win. AMD, winning. Uh, not the 32, but the uh, 4.8 or 4.6. Ha <laughs>